speakers. Assalamu alaikum and uh, very good afternoon. Uh, uh, I hope you, you all are doing very well. Uh, so today, basically, we'll be uh, revising a few topics uh, that we have uh, learned before. Uh, first of all, we'll go through uh, the literature review chapter and then followed by uh, theoretical framework and uh, sampling uh, uh, procedures. So literature review, basically, uh, as uh, we understood that every research uh, that we pursue or undertake, uh, the first thing we need to understand is uh, the research gap. Uh, there must be some uh, kind of problem uh, existing in the corporate sector or in our society or in the nation uh, that uh, may trigger us uh, to do uh, some kind of research. So when we decide to do a research, definitely uh, the first thing that we have to do is to uh, look for some primary uh, information uh, needed for us to understand the area of research. So it could be uh, uh, reading newspapers, uh, 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 journals, uh, magazines, it could be reading books, uh, it could be uh, uh, sharing ideas with friends, uh, or somebody who has experienced uh, the similar thing that you are doing now. So those are the primary uh, uh, screening that you do uh, by reading. So one of it, definitely the most important part of it is uh, uh, literature review. So we, we straight go to uh, journal articles, especially. Um, hundreds of people are doing research all over the world. and. Uh, Thousands of paper uh, are being uh, published every month, okay? Uh, and also because of online uh, digital uh, technologies that you have, uh, publication become faster and then uh, is visible to us and uh, it's easy uh, for us also to review and then summarize it and see whether it could be useful or relevant to us. Um, so as we understood that uh, the first thing that we need to find out is uh, the research problem. If there is a problem, then only we, we proceed to do some kind of research. We have to prove that there are some gaps and uh, some problems, some troubles, uh, some concerns are there uh, which require immediate attention of researchers. Uh, then we try to uh, uh, identify and define those uh, using the existing literature. So uh, normally students would be always asking, how do I read a paper? Because reading paper is not something very good, something very interesting. Uh, uh, once you download a paper and you start reading, after one, uh, reading one or two pages, you may not be interested to read anymore. Because reading paper is definitely, uh, for the first time, would be a very boring sort of uh, uh, thing. So there are certain rules that we need to follow. Uh, a paper, when it is downloaded, or we need to read about uh, four times. Huh? The first stage we call it previewing, whereby um, we will read the paper for the sake of reading. Uh, so we will not try to really understand what is being written. written. Uh, we may not uh, underline uh, 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 or read mark uh, uh, or highlight uh, the areas that we think are relevant or important for us. We may just read for the sake of reading. So that gives you some kind of feeling that this paper could be relevant, could be useful to me. Then only we proceed to second reading. The second reading, we call it annotating. Meaning while we read the second time, we would be um, underlining and uh, highlighting the areas or lines or, 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 or paragraphs that we feel very relevant, very important for us. So that is the second reading. So it's a serious reading. You'll be reading line by line, uh, uh, and then uh, in the third reading, uh, what we will do, we will uh, uh, summarize it. Third reading will summarize it. For summary, there are many different uh, ways of summary. Uh, uh, there are many ways are there how uh, you can do the summary of a paper. Um, but as I have taught you, uh, I have given you a template. Uh, which can be followed and you have done an assignment on it. So basically a paper, a social science paper is usually 
uh, 10 pages uh, to 40 pages long, very long paper. So if you are asked to summarize, the question would be, uh, how many pages the summary going to be? All right, so I have uh, created a template and shared with you uh, uh, that a paper can be summarized into only one page. It doesn't matter how long the paper is. So the element of templates also I shared with you, uh, you have to identify uh, the kind of research problem that researchers tackle in their research. Uh, number two, you got to identify what kind of theories they use. Number three, you got to uh, uh, identify the variables uh, uh, that have been uh, identified by previous researchers, uh, independent, moderating, mediating variables that we try to identify. And then uh, we also look at uh, the research methodology whereby we look at research design, uh, data collection method, uh, how data being analyzed. We look at those things also. And then uh, later on, uh, we look at the findings of that research, the paper that you are reading. And then finally, we look at suggestions for future research. So these are the seven elements that uh, is being identified. And uh, I have prepared a template for you. So a paper can be easily summarized into one uh, page only. It doesn't matter how long uh, the paper is. And uh, the fourth reading is uh, basically comparing and con contrasting. Uh, in, in, in my slide, uh, on my lecture, uh, I have also mentioned that uh, once you have finished reading a paper and you start reading the second paper, you will uh, find out that you cannot remember anything what you read uh, in the first paper. Uh, so what you do is once you finish uh, reading second paper, uh, then you have to compare with the first paper. And that's why how you are comparing and contrasting uh, between papers. So as I have uh, taught you, uh, once you finish uh, reading 10 papers, uh, and then you have summarized into 10 pages, these 10 pages can be again summarized into one page only meaning that you are going to have 10, page, 10 papers summary into one A4 paper only. Well, that's the beauty of uh, doing a systematic literature review, step by step. So you are reading for four times, you are summarizing it, and then at the end you are putting it in a template whereby you can have 10 papers in one A4 paper. Okay, so this is some kind of a system that uh, we have developed and we learn all right so the contents also i think needless to say that i have already explained what are the contents should be uh, uh, taken from a research paper uh, as we understand that um, if we read two three four uh, five six seven or even ten papers you realize uh, that uh, in the area of research uh, most of the researchers may have used uh, similar theories uh, similar data collection methods uh, unless there is something different that you've got to uh, look at very uh, seriously why a particular researcher used different techniques in his research. So the, that's, that's how we do literature review, but when it comes to approach in literature review, there are two approaches basically. Uh, we look at uh, two approaches, basically uh, deductive approach and inductive approach. Deductive approach whereby we, we look at in, uh, uh, the existing literature, and from there, we try to uh, deduct, right? The idea coming here. We, we, we scrutinize, uh, we read, we review, and then finally we find out the factors or variables. We do the testing and finally we confirm what are the factors in your research found to be significant. This is deductive. You are deducting from the existing knowledge, okay? So you are deducing something from the existing knowledge. Um, the second approach is inductive. Uh, which is basically you have to collect data and then you have to uh, finally come out with a new theory. So you are inducting, that's why you call it inductive approach. So when you are doing literature review, we have to keep that in mind, uh, whether you are following uh, inductive or you are following deductive approach. Uh, so how do we determine whether you should be adopting uh, deductive or inductive? It depends on the area of research, uh, the kind of research problem in hand and uh, definitely the complexity, uh, the nature of the research uh, will determine what kind of approach you should be taking. So that's what we uh, look at in literature review. I have given you a, a full uh, 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 
uh, contains uh, should be in the literature review. Usually, uh, when you describe a literature review, we'll start with global, then we come to regional, and then we come down to national. That's how it is, right? So we start with very broad area of reviewing. Then we uh, uh, slowly try to zoom in. So we start with global, then we come to uh, 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 regional, then we come to national, and if needed even, from national we come down to some very specific uh, uh, geographical uh, location uh, where we uh, uh, undertake the research. So there's also another approach uh, looking from world view to regional to national to uh, local uh, view. You do also do that, okay? Uh, the other approach of uh, uh, describing literacy review uh, would be simple one is if we start with uh, dependent variable, the definition of dependent variable, you describe uh, certain important uh, aspects of dependent variable. And then we uh, move on to a relationship between one independent dependent then followed by another independent dependent. And then we look at moderating, mediating, and then followed by in case if you have control variable. So once you describe all these, at the end there must be a summary whereby you will highlight uh, the research gap. Okay, so the purpose of doing literacy review is basically identifying the research gap. You have to find out uh, what have been done and what it, what it, what is not done. Uh, that gives you the room to do uh, new research. That gives you, uh, you know, uh, some space to to undertake uh, new research. And that's that's why we do all this reading so many papers. So how many papers should you read? Uh, in case if you are doing PhD, we always suggest uh, that you should be uh, reading at least 40 papers by heart. By heart, huh? at least 40 papers. So as I said, uh, you can summarize uh, 10, uh, 10 research paper into one A4 paper, and you can go for four rounds. Huh? That's how I supervise my PhD student. Uh, they read 10 papers and they summarize into one A4 paper, and then uh, they come and debate with me. Then they will go for second round, they read another 10 papers. They will come and debate with me and then they will do a third round and fourth round. After 40 papers are read, basically what you have is four pages of summary. And then I will ask uh, my student, can you summarize these four pages in the one page? So meaning that uh, a student is going to have uh, 40 page, 40 research paper summary into one a four paper only. Okay, that's the beauty you will see. Huh? So when uh, I hope some of you will pursue a PhD in uh, your life and uh, you will see the beauty of it. Um, I will WhatsApp you uh, one uh, 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 template, not template summary, uh, whereby I will sh I'll, I'll show you the summary, I'll, I'll share with you summary of 10 research papers. Uh, into 10 different uh, pages and then these 10 pages being summarized into one page. So I will uh, WhatsApp you today, I'll share with you um, 10 pages summary into one A4, A4, A4 paper. Okay, so I think that's going to be very interesting for you to see how we do that. So that's how literature review is. Huh? So in case uh, somebody asks you, uh, what do you mean by systematic literature review? So that's what it is, right? Systematically, step by step, uh, we read, uh, then we annotate, we summarize, and then we compare, contrast. Uh, and then finally, a comprehensive summary is being prepared. Now, any one of you has a question on this literature review, the uh, short briefing that I've given you? Anyone has a question? You can ask me now. Sir, may I ask you, sir? Sure, sure, sure. Sir, when there is a problem, then there is a research. Mm. So after having a problem and after finishing a research paper, why should we go for literature review? What is the problem that we have to go for literature review? What is the reason behind it, sir? Mm. Yes, sir. Basically, when uh, we see uh, that there is a problem uh, uh, persist in any industry, uh, then we try to do a research. Uh, then when you want to do research, uh, then uh, uh, you need uh, some kind of uh, uh, identification and definition of that research problem. Uh, that's what you do also, for example, like um, uh, 
if 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 you want to find the research gap, uh, then you you ask people uh, who are involved in that area, or you you start reading newspapers or you read uh, books, all that. Basically, these all are literature review, uh, and that's why when you do PhD, we do write chapter two first, not chapter one, not research problem first. We read papers first to understand the research problem. Then only we write research problem statement in chapter one. You know, that's how we do it. Because in order to understand the problem, you have to read research papers. Because what you have observed, it has to be validated. It has to be verified uh, that it is really a true uh, and academic problem that can be researched. Okay, there are many thing, uh, problems there, outside there, which uh, cannot be solved by doing research. There are many. So we have to do the literature review in order to verify and validate and confirm that uh, this research can be undertaken. It can be an academic or professional research. Problem can be solved by doing research. And that's why you will do the literature review. Did I answer your question, Shihab? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I got it, sir. Thank you, sir. Any other question, anyone? Sir, I have a question, sir. Yes, so why do? Sir, I have a question, sir. Yes, yes, please. Sir, uh, Amra, uh, sir, Amra, first ki gap, mane research gap, find out kuro bo na, sir, Amra research problem find out kuro sir again. First, jodi research korte chahi, mane je uh, Amra je research korte chahi, ta hole first ki gap find kuro bo, research gap na, sir. Acha, I am a good sir. To me, research gap or research problem to dita bhinno jinish na. The uh, gap ta bear kurba shitai research problem. Come on. Jeta kora hoye si, a jeta kora hoy nee. The gap ta pore as. We khane to research saw door kar. Come on. We we khane the problem. Jokhon kono problem arise kore. Sir, sir, ata question sir. Amra je. Ha, amader jodi solution thakhi hathe. Tali to research kora door kar nai. To udhi kangsho shomai solution ekdom na ita to na. Solution kichu thakhe. Aar kichu thakhe na. Shitai amra gap bolle. Jamon moni kora ekhon jara. Covid ni research kuchse. Covid to no tun kichhu na. Ita holo coronavirus pithibi the raagi aro tinta coronavirus pithibi the already aatse. Ita kintu chhoto chhoto number. Ta ekhon aage tinta ke to amra tackle kore chhi osho daatse. Kintu eita treatment na. Eita ke gap bala hotse. Man aage gulo aatse eita na. Eje fakta na. E fakta holo research gap. Eita holo research problem. Je ei rok tar chikishat juno kono vaccine na. Ba osho dabishka hotse. Eita juno research korar dorkar. E gap ta ke amra bolle research problem. আরেটা জন্য আমরা ডিটেইলস রিভিউ করি জি স্যার বুঝতে পারছি স্যার আরেকটা জিনিস সেটা হলো আমরা যেমন 40টা যদি রিসার্চ পেপার আমরা ছামারি করি তাহলে দেখা যাচ্ছে যে আমরা অনেকগুলি অ্যানালাইসিস सेम হয়ে যাচ্ছে অনেকগুলি স্যার হ্যাঁ তো এখন কোনটা আমরা অ্যানালাইজ করব কোনটা করব না এটা কিসের উপর ডিপেন্ড করে স্যার এটাই তুমি ছামারি করার জন্য স্যার তুমি মনে করো যে ছামারিতে তো আমি যে টেমপ্লেট দিয়েছি আর সেখানে তো সাতটা সাতটা ভিন্ন বক্স আছে কেমন अमेरिकार मत ना सिंगापुर मत ना सामारी रिसार्चे কার কোশ্চেন আছে বন্ধের ভিতরে কার কোশ্চেন আছে দুইজন ভাই তো প্রশ্ন করলো আর কার কোশ্চেন আছে কি 
and how can you summarize ten paper in a single paper? Can you see it, sir? Yeah, she told me. I told you that I am going to share with you WhatsApp. I will share with you. I am going to 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 share with you. আর আজকে আমি ক্লাসের পরে তোমাদেরকে শেয়ার করে দিব সেটা হলো যে দশটা পেপার দশ পেজে যে সামারাইজ করে দিই সে দশ পেজকে এক পেজে নিয়ে এসে সামারাইজ করে দেয় সেটা আমি শেয়ার করে দিব আজকে আর কারো কি কোনো কোয়েশ্চেন আছে that is uh, if you have uh, the opportunity to share with us 40 papers in a single a4 paper uh, it will be very much helpful for the students who like to go for higher education okay inshallah inshallah i will do that uh, I, I will whatsapp you first the 10 papers one and then later okay. i will share with you the 40 pages one okay so thank you um ইভা ইভা কেমন আছো ইভা কি লাইনে আছো নাকি জি স্যার ভালো স্যার আপনি ভালো আছেন আছি আপু বলো তোমার এটা কি পুরো বোঝা গেছে আজকে লেকচারটা আগে তো জি স্যার সামারি কোনো क्वेश्चन আছে এখানে জি না স্যার আমার তেমন क्वेश्चन নেই ক্লিয়ার না জি স্যার মাইনুল তোমার কি আজকে এই সংক্ষিপ্ত যে একটা ব্রিফ লেকচার দিনের পর তোমার কি কোনো ইস্যু আছে মাইনুল सैम्पलिंग uh sampling is basically uh, when we conduct research uh, there could be uh, hundreds and thousands of potential respondents but we will not be able to take everybody uh, in the sample but again just selecting some people would not be right there must be some systematic way of selecting people as sample population as respondents uh, for example uh, if you are doing a research on uh customer satisfaction on mobile phones uh, then definitely there are few course of bangladeshis uh, use uh, handphone so you cannot take so many people in the sample so first of all we have to determine the size of the sample and then we have to determine the method how are you going to select the people uh, to be uh, a sample uh, uh, respondents for our study okay so what we do basically we divide sampling method uh, in into two uh, number one is probability sampling and number two is non probability sampling in probability sampling uh, we define it as uh, every uh, potential respondents has equal opportunity to to be chosen everyone has equal chance to be chosen so nobody knows who is going to be chosen that's what we call it as probability sampling or random sampling okay um the most important aspect that you have to keep in mind is if you want to use these sampling methods uh, then you must obtain uh, the list of all respondents list of all respondents okay so if you are doing a research on customer satisfaction on mobile phone so the list is not obtainable so you cannot use probability sampling but if you are doing a research on student satisfaction of northern university so the list of students is obtainable so you can use probability sampling so that is the most important thing that you have to uh, keep in mind eh? uh, 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 a lot of academicians have misunderstanding on this uh, when to use probability and when uh, to use non probability so the first requirement for us to use probability sampling is uh, we must uh, be able to obtain the list of all potential respondents okay so if you have the list then there are three methods of selection number one we call it random sampling so we choose uh, from the list randomly 
So we do not know participants. Uh, we just obtain the list. We do not know anyone in the list. We just choose uh, randomly, okay, as, as it goes. So I take like one, then nine, then 15, uh, whatever. The number comes in, I just tick. And I make sure that uh, I have my uh, uh, adequate number uh, chosen for my research. That is called random sampling, selecting randomly from the list. Number two uh, uh, is known as systematic sampling, whereby we choose respondents based on the system. So you have obtained the list and then you develop a system. It could be every odd number, or it could be uh, every, every even number, or it could be like 1, 10, 20, 30, 40. Equal interval should be there. It could be 1, 7, uh, 14, 21, 28. Huh? It could be 1, 3, 6, 9. So equal interval should be there in between the selection of respondents. So that's why we call it systematic sampling because we are selecting uh, 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 with the system. Okay, selecting respondents with the system. The third one in uh, uh, probability sampling, we call it as uh, um, stratified sampling, whereby we will uh, choose respondents based on strata. Strata is just a segment of population. Say, for example, male and female. How many male I would like to have? How many female I would like to have? Or uh, it could be, um, it could be like a geographical area from which division, how many are you going to choose? It could be single and married, how many married and how many single you'd like to have. So uh, 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 as long as we choose respondents based on strata and then by random sampling, uh, randomly selecting from the strata, from the groups, from the groups, we choose them randomly from the list. So that's what is called stratified uh, sampling. The fourth one is a multi state sampling, which is also very uh, popular nowadays. So you may have even a step by step procedure of selecting uh, uh, respondents. Say, for example, uh, you want to do a study on garments industry. So, garments industries are basically concentrated in Dhaka and Chittagong, or possibly some in uh, Kulna. I'm not sure other uh, divisions, how many garments uh, company or industry we have. So in that case, since uh, most of the garments uh, companies are concentrated in Dhaka and Chittagong, so first stage, you can say, I want to take only from Dhaka and Chittagong. Number two, Dhaka, then again, you have many areas concentrating, you know, the concentration of garments companies, for example, like Ashulia, uh, Gazipur, uh, uh, the, you know, uh, the greater Dhaka could be Norshindi. Uh, so there are many different, different areas where you have most number of garments uh, companies. So here also you can have certain uh, way of doing. Uh, so stage one, then stage two, stage three, stage four. We can choose respondents based, um, you know, using uh, step by step methods or different stages once you obtain the list. So this is basically probability sampling. When you cannot obtain the list of uh, all potential respondents, then we have to move into non-probability sampling. Okay, so that point is very important. When you cannot obtain the list, then you move into non-probability sampling. Like you are doing a research on uh, uh, customer satisfaction on mobile phones. Um, you are doing a research on, uh, uh, say, for example, uh, customer uh, satisfaction on uh, 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 private and uh, uh, public banks in Bangladesh. So in that case, you would be moving into non-probability sampling. You don't have a list. So here you have a few methods again. The first method we call it as a convenient sampling. Convenient sampling as it is convenient. So you don't have a list, uh, but if people are near to you, uh, uh, someone accessible to you, uh, reachable to you, uh, someone uh, would be called cost saving uh, to reach. Uh, so we have number of things that we look at uh, to choose people to be in the sample, okay? so. It could be like uh, we choose people, uh, those are living nearby me, or we choose people uh, uh, from uh, the place that I work in, you know, or we choose people using our friends who are working in different industries, so without any list of it. So we call it convenient sampling. The second non probability sampling method is known as uh, purposive sampling. Sometimes we call it judgment sampling. So you choose respondents. Uh, uh, using our judgment as uh, long as we feel that 
this person uh, can fill in the questionnaire and the data would be useful and relevant to me. We can choose that person to be a sample respondent. So that is called uh, purposive sampling. So we are using our judgment, okay? As long as it serves our purpose, uh, we, 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 choose, we choose the person to be uh, uh, a respondent. And the third method is known as quota sampling. So we choose people based on uh, different groups and with the quota, for example, like male and female. Okay, so you can here again, we can have proportionate and non-proportionate sampling. So if you have say in Bangladesh population, uh, we have uh, uh, say 53% uh, uh, male and say 47% female. I'm not very sure on the composition. Uh, so then our respondents would be also should be like that. Or say, for example, you are doing a research on student satisfaction at Northern University of Bangladesh. Uh, then uh, you would know exactly uh, the, 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 the percentage of male and percentage of female uh, from the authority. In that case, the quota has to be developed like that. And then you choose uh, as, as you like. Okay, So that could be quota sampling also there. And then uh, there's another method which is also quite popular nowadays, uh, mixture of probability and non-probability sampling, mixture of random and non-random sampling. That is basically we known as, it is known as a snowball sampling. So we start with uh, one group of people and then from their reference, you go to another group and from their reference, you go to another group. So we start with non-probability and later uh, we, we choose probability, okay? Because first one, uh, we just uh, choose, right? Uh, it could be probability first and then non-probability later. So it depends. Uh, so mixture of probability, non-probability method could be there. This is what is called uh, uh, snowball sampling, okay? So the probability sampling, in other words, we call it random sampling and non-probability sampling, we call it in other words, non-random sampling. So as I summarize again, let me repeat and uh, recall back. Uh, so we have the two different type of group of uh, sampling methods. First group, we call it uh, random sampling or probability sampling. And the uh, other group, we call it non-probability sampling or non-random sampling. So under probability sampling, we have basically uh, four. Uh, we talked about uh, simple random sampling. We talk about systematic sampling. We talk about study based sampling as well as multi-state sampling. Okay, and then for non-probability sampling, we look at uh, convenient sampling, just bin or purposive sampling, and then quota sampling. At the same time, we may also use the other sampling, which is known as uh, snowball sampling. There are other few sampling methods also available there, which are not very popular, but sometimes we may use it. For example, like cluster sampling is also available. Even sampling, uh, the term is also available there. Okay, so. This is how uh, uh, we choose people uh, as respondents. So we have to understand that we cannot simply just choose somebody. So there must be some way of doing it. Now, how do we know which kind of uh, sampling method should be chosen? Okay, so first of all, uh, it depends on uh, the first criteria, whether um, you can obtain the lease or you cannot obtain the lease. If you can obtain the lease, then it goes to probability. Not obtaining the lease goes to non-probability. And then uh, with the probability sampling, we have four. So we, that's the reason we review uh, literature. We read uh, research papers uh, published based on research by previous researchers. And we see what kind of research uh, sampling method they have used. So we will try, you know, we'll try to replicate the similar uh, research uh, sampling method in our research. Because if you have read 40 papers and you found uh, 30 researchers use uh, random sampling, that it is better that you use the same because there must be some uh, reason. Huh? Because when you run PLAs or SPSS, uh, uh, when you test the validity and reliability, you will uh, develop some kind of understanding what kind of uh, sampling method uh, being chosen. And not only that, when you use certain sampling method and when you have the findings with you, um, that findings would be definitely uh, be based on the kind of respondents that you have chosen. So if your findings are very good, then I would use that kind of uh, sampling method that you have chosen. 
The most important aspect in sampling method you have to remember, huh? uh, basically we are taking few people, but we are generalizing it. Okay, we take 200 people, but we generalize it as like two and three, two or three cores uh, of people. So your data is collected from 300, 400 people, but you are summarizing it, uh, and generalizing it, saying that uh, two cores of people or 20 million of people have said that. That's how we do it. So the sampling is very crucial and very important and very critical. And we have to choose the right sampling method before we proceed to collect the data. So this is the first one for sampling. Uh, I need, uh, I, would, I, would, I would open the session now for you in case if you need any uh, clarification from me on this uh, before I move on to uh, sample size. Anyone has a question on sampling method in case if you need further clarification. You can speak in Bengali, there's no problem with me. Huh? Um, I want to ask a question, sir. Yes. Yeah. Suppose we are going to measure the popularity of a political leader. Mm -hmm. Some people, those are the follower of this leader or that leader. Mm -hmm. How can we determine the follower? How can we find out original result, original outcome from this type of uh, cluster people? Sir? Basically, if you want to do a study on popularity of a political leader, then uh, you may not have the least of population, am I right? Yes. Unless, uh, unless you contact, yeah. So unless you contact the party leadership, and uh, if you are you are you are looking at uh, a leader uh, on a district based, uh, then possibly they may have some kind of a list inside the party. But when you want to measure the popularity of a person, so it is not only inside the party; it's also about outside the party people. So in that yes. case, you don't have the list of population, so you go for non-probability. So in non-probability, you can choose convenient sampling, you can use purposive sampling, it doesn't matter. Okay, but um, both, both is okay. Even quota sampling would be also okay. Any other question? Sir, after having the result, if you feel that this is not the actual result, what should we do that time? Sir? When you find this is not actual result, meaning that there was something wrong with your sampling. That's why yes, sir. There's something wrong, sir. Yes, sir. The sampling method. What should we do? That's why. That's why I said when you read the papers, uh, you have to carefully look at what kind of sampling method are being adopted by all previous researchers. That gives you some kind of clue uh, of what kind of sampling method you should use. And also, you have to remember that uh, uh, we we do advocate. Uh, that you should not be doing quantitative research alone. Uh, you need to do some kind of qualitative research also. So in case if you find uh, the sampling method being used and then you conducted the research and you found that finding doesn't seem to be uh, the true reflection of people, then you have to proceed to uh, qualitative research. So you may have to conduct your selective interview or focus group discussion. That will be very helpful to solve your problem. Okay, Shiam, you understood me, right? Yes, I got it. In case if you find it's not uh, uh, expected outcomes that uh, you know you wanted from the research, then you have to do something additional. So, in-depth interview, focus group uh, discussion would be helpful to to get some hands-on, you know, uh, uh, on-spot uh, 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 data from people. That could be helpful. Sir, sir, hmm. if if our research problem is new or uh, uh, my research topic is first to implement in literature review or research, doing research. What kind of technique we use? You, 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 cannot, you cannot find any research area which is totally new. If it's totally new, then you cannot find any literature, am I right? Uh, part of it, that's what you look yeah. at. For example, uh, we are looking at job satisfaction. Uh, but, but, Thousands of people, not thousands, millions of people, millions of studies being done all over the world. But it's still uh, for human resource manager to develop policies to satisfy everyone. Is it possible? Not, yes, not really. No, sir. Not really. No, sir. Because uh, things are changing. Things are changing. For example, now with COVID, uh, situation is very different. After COVID, it would be again different. 
And before COVID, it was something else. Okay, yeah, even uh, when we have conducted the study on job satisfaction, if data collected at the beginning of the year and data collected end of the year, the findings are different. You know, and even data collected the first week of the month and data collected at the end week of the month, the findings are different because people we are like that. You know, and also it depends on the age. When you started your job, you got ten thousand salary, you are very happy. About you got twenty thousand, you are very happy. But after two three years, you think that this is not enough. Uh, which you are very satisfied now, you are not satisfied. So you need some increment. If the company gives you, you stay there. If the company doesn't give you, you move into another company. And then after five years, you need some more salary because you have got married and you got kids. And then after ten years, you need more salary because your kid is grown and he is going to be. Uh, to the high school and then going to the university and then you need to buy a house so your unending needs is there so you'll never be satisfied with any organization all the time and that's why uh, research is being done and, and 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 it has to be done because situation changes with covid now uh, the things that you are seeing i'm not very sure how much you understood uh, the implications of covid uh, could be very severe uh, could be very severe uh, millions of people might be losing jobs uh, for our country uh, could be hundreds of people uh, or thousands of people would be going back from overseas those are working in middle east and uh, malaysia and many other country uh, because this country like even in malaysia now uh, the the government is saying 2.4 million malaysian will lose their job and last week uh, i have seen uh, followed up with the newspapers Few hundred Bangladeshi being arrested illegal huh? during this time, during the COVID time, which is very unfortunate. But once the COVID is over, definitely there will be many workers will be sent back uh, because the industry doesn't need them anymore. So, so that's how it is huh? because the situation uh, changes. Uh, the environment is, uh, is is we call it hyper turbulent. The uh, changes are taking place uh, so quick and so fast. Uh, so uh, continuous research has to be done. Okay, so there's nothing new. Any research you want to do, you'll find some kind of research have been done. Could be in different country, in different contexts. May not be same as your context, but research have been done. You will never find totally new research to be done. For example, like you are talking about uh, COVID medicine. It's not something new. We had uh, three uh, coronavirus uh, existing in the world now. So this is new, but not totally new, okay? It's the same kind of viral fever that we had before. So once we had a vaccine, they, this, this virus would be controlled. So we are waiting for that, okay? So in any area like this, if you look at and carefully analyze, uh, some kind of research have been done. It is there, okay? Any other question, anyone? Uh, let me ask someone. Uh, Jishan, Jishan, do you have any question? Do you understood? Do you understand? Hello, Jishan. Jishan is on online. Uh, hey, Jishan. Sir. Boda, boda ke si tu na. Lecture tu tu kya to boda? Boot so na. Acha, acha. Nazrana, tomar kya ho? Nazrana, do you want to see Nazrana, are you in Hello, Nazrana. Nazrana, are you in the room? Fatima, do you want to see Yes, sir. Tell me. Yes, sir. Sampling, do you understand it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. मोटा मोटी तो होले हवेन। तार आमी वो जो सिस्टेमेटिक जो लिटरेचर रिव्यू टा आपने जो बोला है जो स्टेप बाय स्टेप इटा ये कोटा भी इटा जो दे आरेख पर एक तो बोलें। हम्म अखोन तो आम्रा सैम्पलिंग है सी आम्रा तो लिटरेचर रिव्यू तो नहीं। तार आमी सैम्पलिंग तो सुने थे लिटरेचर रिव्यू तो both step by step, Iglo to Motomodic clear Shita Holoji Amra Jokon at a research problem in hand Thakbe. Jokon to Amra paper Kuzbo OE research problem related. The one you did a company the problem of job satisfaction. Amra Kibabajanbo. 
turnover rate খুব high, employee turnover rate খুব high, absenteeism rate খুব high, productivity is low. By looking all these indication, you know something is wrong. Okay, so employees are not uh, satisfied or motivated. So we have to identify a problem. Once you know the problem, then we look for related literature. If job satisfaction is a problem, so we try to find job satisfaction related research papers. So that would be the first step. So you obtain papers. So what should you do now? So we say you should be reading for four times. Okay, first reading is previewing, second reading is annotating, third reading is summarizing, and then fourth reading is comparing, contrasting. And then I have given you, uh, this is a uh, full time reading, right? Uh, so I have given you templates which can be used to summarize papers. So when okay. you read papers in the template, basically you have, I have given you seven boxes there. Uh, what you need to identify from a paper. If a paper is 30 pages long, you don't need everything from a paper. You may just take few lines, you know. Some cases you only take three, four lines, not more than that from a paper. And some cases you just take the theory from the paper. And some cases you just look at how did they collect the data, did they collect the data. So those all are steps are there, which that's what we call a systematic literature review. We start from, uh, from, from scratch, from zero, then until we become like a specialized, you know, a specialist in the area of the research. We read 40 papers by heart and we take control over the area, understand the research problem. We understand what kind of thing we can explain my problem. We understand what kind of variable being studied before that explain my variable dependent variable. Uh, we understand what kind of research method we can be used. So these all are very systematic. That's what you systematic literature review. Okay, Fatima. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Um say? Nozul Islam, to me to follow the key. Line at so. Nozul Islam, the line at so. Hello, Nozul Islam, to me line at so. Internet is so shanaki. You why do our postma seneco? Why do sir? Actor question, silo sir. I mean, actually, class at the Miss Kurifil cinema. Our network problem, silo sir. Shadow sample size, sir. Jumon, do show the sample size near Sarjit to Bolton, sir. Question Kurina. I mean, a poly to sample set a discussion as go. At a tattoo, tickets. It poly sample size discussion as go. Arkar question at Senaki. A Mapuzi Roman at Sunaki line. Mahfuzur Rahman, the line also. Sir, Amra, sir, Arta Kotha, sir, Amra ki ducha, man probability, non probability, ducha ki use korte par. Na Amra to normally actor method use kor. Thakte tali probability list na thakte normal. Okay, sir, sample select korte sir. Hey, oi tai to, amader jodi full list of respondents available thakte, tali probability. Ajo list na thakte dal non probability. Kaje ekhane to aur question na jame ducha ekshati use kolam shita to na unless to me, you the uh, interview by the honey kuno qualitative data the jatal snowball sampling use for a jetabare. Potum koi jun ke interview nila, tapre tadashan kotabole abaracta list pillar, she list take is look silet kula to shake and to potume non probability tarpore probability. A the honey mistron hutebare. Yes, sir. At such duty, a caracuna question na take talami for a topic a jai, she does sample size. A con kotaholoji. Kotu Shanko sample uh, population, Kotu Shanko population take data collection coldly. Amar research uh, acceptable hoy, valid hoy, uh, Ami at a paper published Kurti Pari, come on. So Shita Junoto on a Dharuned uh, statistical calculation uh, table at uh, Uma Sakaran at a table at say, Krishi and Morgan at a table Amitoman Shat Shia Kurzi. A duta table uh, popular, a duta Bishi Babor hoy. Uma Sakarane to uh, on it latest 1986 uh, 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 compared to Krishi Morgan 1970. But both tables also very similar. You can just follow the table. You have total number of population and how many you need. That's the minimum size uh, that is given. Huh? But statistically, any research we do, minimum 30 must be there. That is the minimum number. Okay, minimum 30. Even you do a pilot study, 30 has to be there, minimum 30. And then after that, it depends on how large 
the total population size is. So we, we choose based on uh, uh, total number of respondents from the corresponding table. It could be Massacre and table, it could be Krishi and Morgan table. Uh, I have also shown you uh, the G power and Rao soft, which uh, has given you the slide also, you can follow step by step to determine the minimum size of population. So this uh, minimum number that we choose uh, basically uh, tells us that is enough to generalize the findings. So even though we have taken, say for example, your, if your population is over 100,000, then your minimum sample would be 384, minimum. Huh? So when you have 384, you analyze the data, uh, even though it is uh, five cores, huh? Statistically proven. This table is proven, uh, is prepared based on uh, research. Uh, so calculation is done on based on that. Okay, so uh, it's, it's, it's very uh, professionally uh, and academically developable. So there's no problem with that. You can choose the size based on the table given and there's also formula available for example like green green 1982 uh, uh, she has given a formula the formula is uh, number of variables multiply 10 plus number of items in the questionnaire so let me explain this so say for example you have four independent variable and one dependent variable so how many total variable you have five so five multiplied 10 Number of variable multiply 10. So five variable multiply 10. So we have 50. Plus number of items in the questionnaire. So say for example, in your five variable, each variable you have five questions for each variable. So your five variable, you have 25 questions. So you have 25 items. So 50 plus 25, 75. So that's the minimum number required. Huh? So this is green 1982 formula, which uh, you can also use in your research. But again, whatever method you use to determine the total sample size for your research, you got to justify them. Eh? Uh, you got to describe your method, and finally, you have to say, I have used this uh, 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 to determine uh, the sample size of my research. Now, the selection of method uh, to determine the sample size uh, also depends on what kind of software you use. You know, uh, if you are using PLS then a smaller sample size would be okay. But if you are using SPSS, then we expect larger sample size. So the method gives you larger sample size should be chosen if you are using SPSS. And um, uh, the methods available to choose sample, to determine sample size that gives you lower number, uh, then you have to use PLS. So that's the justification you have. Okay. Uh, Ovaidur, is that okay? Is, is it clear? Uh, yes, yes, sir. I'm clear, sir. It's clear, right? So, PLS elaboration or is the PLS elaboration? Sorry, Shyam. PLS elaboration. PLS partial least square. Partial least square. I'm probably smart PLS at the software. Before generation is statistical software, jeta akun shopche beshi use hoy. Uh, on a Balu journal or SPCC, put analysis for a paper, partly paper grown corona. PLS take a group to die. Caronta holo, a latest software, it are extra kitchen function as Jaman Amra handphone is corina. Actually, two G silo, three G silo, four G, I can five G or as to say. So, a cacta G to extra function near. So, PLS holo, latest software, the current extra biscuits of function as a statistical biscuits of features as a. Smart PLS partial least square method. Tumra Chile Amagas is soft copy as a species super boy as a PLS super soft boy as a soft copy. The Gulami Tumra Chile share Koraja Vishomoshana are Jokon Covid Shopkis settle Huli, Deshi Jokon Arbut, Tahunto. Amra at a software class school boy, Tahuneta to details understanding of Inshallah. Arkarukunu Kushina sampling in Upure Asketoma Udinashikum Nirovaki, Farzana Sunaki, Line 
वजन आप वजन आप मैंने मालयेशा कब फ्लैट जा मानने बड़े रिक्स ट्रावल करते नाहिद हुसैन गुरुपूर्ण झलाइज जेहेतु एडेमिक रिसार्च एटेक्टिव खुबी गुरुपूर्ण एक हलो फिलोसफिकल फाउंडेशन एक हलो थिटिकल फाउंडेशन एक थिटिकल फ्रेमवर्क डेभलप करते हैं फ्रेमवर्क हलो एक बाउंडारि मैं तुम की वेरिएबल निच्छ तुम जो दस ट पंद्रह पेपर पढ़वा देखा जो एक रिसार्च प्रब्लेम इश्यू अनेक जमन मन करो फर एक्साम्पल इफ इट इज जब सैटिसफेक्शन what could be uh, uh, what could be some uh, variables uh, or issues you know to explain job satisfaction it could be salary it could be uh, leadership style it could be uh, employee employee relationship it could be working environment you know it could be uh, uh, human resource policies uh, you know so there could be many thing there training and development available so there are many thing there that may affect job satisfaction so when we develop a framework we take few important one based on our problem in hand so not every industry or company have similar problems okay uh, every company is an individual entity every industry even uh, uh, very different from uh, distinct from other industries so in that case uh, uh, we choose certain uh, uh, relevant and very important variables in the framework so the main uh, uh, the main uh, topic of interest uh, become dependent variable and then those issues explain the dependent variable be become independent variable and then in between you may have intervening variable as i explained before it could be moderating and uh, mediating variable also available sabrina tumi ki line e acho hello sabrina बोझा 
फ्रेमवर्क so we take some independent independent variable put them in the framework so that become the boundary the nucleus of our research that framework must be the reflection of research problem we have in hand and that research framework should be developed through literature review and that theoretical framework must be supported by a particular theory or by a few theories okay so if we have more than one theory so the main theory will become underpinning theory and other theories become supporting theory okay so based on that framework we will construct hypothesis so if you have three independent variable one dependent variable you have three relationships so you have three uh, uh hypothesis there okay that is basically a uh, uh, theoretical framework and hypothesis um so let me uh, conclude this uh, uh, and uh, at the end uh, we have summarized three a uh, topics of uh, three very important topics of research methodology number one uh, you look into a literature review systematic literature review you know we look at it step by step and then uh, look at sampling uh, uh, methods uh, whereby we uh, summarize uh, and review non probability probability sampling and also look at how can you determine the appropriate sample size and then at the end we also quickly summarize how we develop a theoretical framework and then construct hypothesis okay uh let me open up the session now in case if uh, any one of you have uh, have uh, any uh queries or any clarification needed on these three topics sir amar theoretical sir theoretical framework ne sir amar kichu question chilo sir bolo স্যার সেটা হলো ফার্স্ট কোশ্চেনটা হলো স্যার আমরা যখন হাইপোথিসিস ডেভেলপমেন্ট করি একটা হাইপোথিসিস আছে নাল হাইপোথিসিস আর একটা হলো অল্টারনেটিভ হাইপোথিসিস স্যার অনেক সময় দেখা যায় এই দুইটা হাইপোথিসিস ইউজ হয় অনেক সময় দেখা যায় যে অনেকগুলি হাইপোথিসিস ইউজ হয় মানে অল্টারনেটিভ হাইপোথিসিস অনেকগুলি ইউজ হয় স্যার আর অনেক শুনো আমরা নরমালি সোশ্যাল সায়েন্সে নাল হাইপোথিসিসটা ব্যবহার করি না আমরা অল্টারনেটিভ হাইপোথিসিস ইউজ করি দেয়ার ইজ এ রিলেশনশিপ ফ্লেক্সিবিলিটিভিটিভিটিভিটিভিটিভিটিভিটিভিটিভিটিভিটিভিটিভিটিভিটিভিটিভিটিভিটিভিটিভিটিভিটিভিটিভিটিভিটি
স্যার আমাদের যে পরীক্ষা কোশ্চেনটা দিতে হবে যে থিওরিগুলো ইউজ করছি স্যার এইগুলি কি দিতে হবে স্যার মানে আপনি স্যার যে আমাদের যে একটা কোশ্চেন করবেন স্যার ফাইনালে স্যার বলছিলেন স্যার এখানে কি আমাদের থিওরিগুলো কি দিতে হবে স্যার যেটা আমরা ফাইনাল এক্সামে নরমালি থিওরিটিক্যাল ফ্রেমওয়ার্কে থিওরিগুলো কিভাবে বিল্ড আপ করা হয় ক্লাসিফিকেশন অফ থিওরি যা দেয় দেন Uh, how const- uh, hypothesis are constructed, how uh, theoretical framework is designed, you know, all those aspects is covered. Okay, those are important aspects. Yes, sir. Are there any questions? She has a microphone on us. Sir, I want to know the difference between theoretical framework and conceptual framework. What is the difference between it? Mm-hmm. If you still remember uh, when we develop a theory, Uh, there are certain uh, building blocks are there certain stages there for you to develop a theory right we start with ideas then idea become concept then we convert into construct then we go to propositions then we develop a theory okay so if it is a conceptual framework then it is coming from ideas then going to concept it doesn't go beyond that okay <laughs> so that is conceptual framework it based on concept but uh, theoretical framework is much more higher level than that after concept we construct you know we identify construct then we test hypothesis we develop a theory and that framework is coming from that theory is called theoretical framework so if it is theoretical framework is based on a theory which is based quite high level uh, 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 research is conceptual framework is very preliminary uh, uh, fundamental research okay so you may not have a framework a uh, theoretical framework so hypothesis may not be there as uh, coming from theory but you may have a conceptual framework based on that you may hypothesis you may have hypothesis whereby you may use different statistical tools and modeling uh, to test the hypothesis so you are not validating or verifying or proving any theory rather you are trying to validate a concept from there you will move on to construct and proposition and theory later on that is conceptual Okay, so yeah. Sir, how can we easily design a, a framework from a theory? No, we cannot develop conceptual framework from a theory. Conceptual framework concept is very low, uh, basic research. Uh, you have the ideas, from ideas then you screen ideas and you find uh, relevant, uh, relevant uh, and useful ideas. That become your concept. From there you develop uh, a framework, this is sketch. you know conceptual framework this is how the framework looks like and you'll validate it by collecting data and then running it with absolute statistics that said there's no theory there but theoretical framework is developed based on theory all variable coming from theories okay so you test and then you validate or, or you modify theory you expand theory and all that we do but it is based on a theory but concept is not based on theory is bit low level fundamental research See, for example, earlier, Obey Dua was saying, if I do a research completely new, nobody has done before. In that kind of situation, you'll be doing a conceptual framework. You cannot have a theoretical framework because no study has been done. You've got no theories to explain that phenomenon. Then we will definitely go for conceptual framework. Okay, Shia? What is the last question, sir? Yes. How can we relate a variables with the hypothesis? How can we relate it, sir? Just, simple, for example, you have three independent variable, one dependent variable. Now, uh, one dependent variable is, uh, say, uh, salary. So your hypothesis is definitely salary has relationship with job satisfaction. But again, this relationship, positive or negative, you have to take it from the theory. Theory explains it. So if you look at hygiene theory, basically it says salary is a hygiene factor. So salary uh, may have positive, may have negative influence. You do not know. This is hygiene factor. Or it's a motivating factor. For example, leadership style definitely it has positive relations. So that's how we take it again from literature, from the theory. Okay, Shia. Yes, sir. Okay. Any other question? Anyone has a question? Please. Sir, I have a question. Sir, what is the difference between underpinning and supportive theory? Okay, good. Uh, when you have a theoretical framework. which cannot be supported by only one theory if it's only one theory that become underpinning theory but it cannot be supported by one theories 
you need say for example two three theories to support your framework or you develop your framework using two three theories so then from the two three theories you have to find which one is the most dominant theory most important one explain your variables that that theory become underpinning theory so the rest other two theories or one theory become supporting theory is that clear okay Eva? sir thank you clear eh, Eva? yes sir yes sir thank you any other question please last round of questions anyone anyone has a question please last round okay if not then uh, uh, i think for for uh, this uh, uh, revision class i would say uh, we we have to uh, end it here and uh, uh, let's see how uh, can we have uh, uh, basically these three chapters are reviewed and uh, uh, revised uh, for the preparation of final exam and i look at look into some other chapters to, to make you ready for